Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on the introduction to AES, the Advanced Encryption Standard. Let's dive into the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1. Understand the basics of AES. Outcome number 2. We will know the basic differences between DES and AES. Outcome number 3. We will know the AES structure. And outcome number 4. We will know the AES parameters. Let's first step into the topic of the day, the AES, and we will see the basics of AES now. AES stands for the Advanced Encryption Standard. As we have already seen in the last presentation that this is a powerful alternative to DES, which is not a secured encryption standard. And AES was published by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the year 2001. And what kind of encryption standard is this AES? Like DES, AES is also a symmetric block cipher. So symmetric means obviously the same key is used for both encryption and decryption. And AES is not only a symmetric cipher, it is also a block cipher where it is going to take a group of bits as the input and produces a group of bits as the output. So it's not going to take one by one bit or one byte at a time, rather it is going to take a group of bits. To be precise, it's going to take 128 bits as the input that is the plain text size and 128 bits as the output which is the cipher text size. And because of the many powerful features in AES, this AES is widely used even in today's world. Let's now see the AES structure. Here is the AES structure. Can you see here the input which is the plain text which is of 128 bits. Now what is going to happen to this plain text? Actually this plain text is going to be converted into the cipher text which is also of 128 bits. So the 128 bits input which is the plain text is going to be converted into a 128 bit output which is the cipher text. Now how this conversion is happening? This is happening through these many operations. Let's see that now. So firstly the input is actually stored in a state array. Can you see here there is a 16 byte state array and this is also referred as an input state array where these 16 bytes or 128 bits are stored in the state array. One byte is equal to 8 bits. So obviously 128 bits means 16 bytes. So can you see here this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 into 4 which is 16 byte array is there and we can store 16 bytes of information in this array where this input state is currently storing the plain text. Now this input state is actually given to an initial transformation where this initial transformation is going to do some operation with the input state array values and then that transformed value is going to be given to round 1 where in round 1 we have 4 transformations. If you compare this with the DES, we can notice that the size of the plain text is of 64 bits, whereas here it is 128 bits. And in DES we had the initial permutation, whereas here we have initial transformation. And then this is given to round 1, round 2, likewise we have 16 rounds in DES. But here how many rounds we have? This is round 1, then round 2, this is round n minus 1, and this is round n. Why it is mentioned as n instead of a number like 16 or 10 or 12 or 14? Because the number of rounds are going to be varying based on one criteria. What's that? Let's demystify that later. For now, you just understand there is an initial transformation which takes the input state and which does some transformation on it, and then that transformed value is given to round 1. And in round 1, there are 4 transformations. Let's not focus on the 4 transformations now. For now, I will just reveal the names of the transformations. Let's not go too deep into the details now. The 4 transformations are substitute bytes, shift rows, mix columns, and add round key. These are the 4 transformations that are happening in this round. Then the state after transformation is the output state now. And this output state is given to round 2. In round 2 also there are 4 transformations happening. Then the output is given to round 3, round 4 up to round n minus 1. Why I am not simply mentioning it as simply round n. Rather I am mentioning it as round n minus 1 is that. In round n minus 1 we have 4 transformations. And in the last round that is round n we have only 3 transformations. So this is a very important point to be noted here. Suppose we have 10 rounds of operations, then round 1 to round 9, we have 4 transformations, whereas in round 10, we have only 3 transformations. 
In case we have 12 rounds, then round 1 to round 11 we have 4 transformations and the last round that is round 12 will be having only 3 transformations. After coming out of this round n, whatever we get is stored in the final state. This is also going to be 128 bits or 16 bytes and these 16 bytes are the actual cipher text that we are looking for. So simply what is happening? The plain text is stored in the input state array. This is given to the initial transformation function. And after performing the initial transformation, the state array is given to round 1, which contains 4 transformations, round 2, round 3, and up to round n minus 1. These rounds are containing 4 transformations in it. And after that, whatever we get is the output state after round n minus 1. That output is given as the input to round n, which is the last round, where that takes only 3 transformations. And after coming out of round n, whatever we have, that is also a final state only. This is also going to be 16 bytes or 128 bits. And these 128 bits are the ciphertext. And if you compare this with the days, in days we had exactly 16 rounds. Whereas here we have n rounds, where n minus rounds with 4 transformations and nth round with 3 transformation. And also in AES, for initial transformation, we need round 0 key. For round 1, we need round 1 key. For round 2, we need round 2 key. Up to round n minus 1, we need round n minus 1 key. And also, we need round n key for round n transformation. So, if you note here, we need round keys for processing every round. Also, for initial transformation, also we need a key which is referred as round 0 key. And one more thing is that all these round keys are 16 bytes in nature. 16 bytes mean 128 bits. So all the round keys are 128 bits. But what about the original key size? If you can see in the diagram that the key size is mentioned as m bytes, which is not referred with any number. This is simply mentioned as m bytes. In the DES algorithm, if you compare, we have the key size, the original key size as 64 bits. And the subkey is of 56 bits, which is referred as the effective key for DES algorithm. From the 56 bits, we can generate the 48 bit round keys. Whereas here, we have simply mentioned it as m bytes, which means there is some relationship between the key size and the number of rounds to be performed in AES. So if the key size is a different value, then the number of rounds are also going to be differing. So before revealing that, let's understand there is a key value. And this key is going to be of m bytes. And this key is used by the key scheduling algorithm in order to generate the subkeys or the round keys that are actually required for every round. For initial transformation, it needs round 0. For round 1, round 2, up to round n, it needs round 1 key, round 2 key, up to round n key. And all these keys are actually scheduled by the key scheduling algorithm by taking the input key value. Let me now demystify what is the relationship between the number of rounds and the key size. If you see here, if your key size is of 128 bits, so here I have mentioned it as m bytes, right? In other words, it is 128 bits, that is 16 bytes, right? So if the key value is 128 bits or 16 bytes, then obviously the number of rounds is going to be 10. So it means this algorithm will behave like this, round 1, round 2, up to round 9, we have 4 transformations and in round 10, we have only 3 transformations. What if the key size is 192 bits? That is 24 bytes or 192 bits. Then the number of rounds will be 12. 12 means round 1, round 2, up to round 11, we will have 4 transformations in each round. Whereas in the last round, that is round 12, we will have only 3 transformations. In case the key size is 256 bits or 32 bytes, then it takes 14 rounds. So round 1 to round 13 with 4 transformations and round 14 with 3 transformations. Let me elaborate on this now. AES comes in 3 variations. AES 128, AES 192 and AES 256. So in all the cases or in all the variations, the input size and the output size remain the same. That is the plain text size and the ciphertext size is going to be 128 bits only for any AES variation. Whereas the key size is actually differing. AES128 means it's going to be taking a key which is of 128 bits in size. Whereas AES192 means it's going to take 192 bits as the key size and AES256 takes 256 bits as the key size. And the number of rounds is going to be differing. 
For AES 128, the number of rounds is going to be 10, where 9 rounds with 4 transformation and the last round with 3 transformation. AES 192 takes 12 rounds and AES 256 takes 14 rounds, where in the 12 round operation, it's going to do 4 transformations in 11 rounds and 3 transformations in the last round. Whereas in AES 256, it's going to take 4 transformations in 13 rounds and the last round with 3 transformations. And the round key size is going to be 128 bits in all the case. Whereas the input size of the key is going to be differing in all the 3 AES variations. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the basics of AES. We also have seen some differences between DES and AES. We also have seen the AES structure and the AES parameters. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.